a beautiful afternoon. I'm hanging out on my porch. It's summer. The war is long over. I was reading this beautiful book, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And one story reminded me of something that happened in uh, my own life a long time ago in some other time in some other country in some other place this story was about uh, an American soldier turning back from Vietnam to notify his uh, comrade's wife about his death so a long time ago uh, in, in, in former Yugoslavia there was this beautiful army college that I attended and uh, the college was uh, for absolutely everybody there was Bosnians there there was Croatians, Serbians, Slovenians we represented this whole country there were so many of us there 27 million people very strong army uh, when I was 15 years old I joined this college and uh, I chose to become a tank mechanic so I studied tanks there was 14 of us chosen into that particular group and uh, we all became you know brothers for life of course because we would spend four years together uh, one of my best friends was dragon and dragon was of uh, was a serb bosnian serb i was a bosnian muslim so we come we came from the same country and we had so much in common he was a uh, first drummer that I ever played with in my rock and roll band. <laughs> he was an amazing guy, but he was so freaking skinny, right? So we used to joke that when he was showering, he would be avoiding the water <laughs> because he was that skinny. Or he, at night, like when we would like try to wash our feet, he could use a bottle just to put his feet into the bottle. He was that skinny. He was tall, lanky and skinny. And I was, you know, short and overweight. Of course, you know, like 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 that. That's Tom, that, 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 those two comedic characters, that, that this Oliver and Hardy or something like that. I don't remember them. Uh, I remember them in, in in our language, but not in English. Uh, we were just really really good friends. Uh, unfortunately, the war happened uh, in former Yugoslavia, and somehow overnight we became, you know, kind of enemies you know our sides were fighting you know the bosnian muslims and bosnian serbs were fighting each other and uh, because of that neither of us could really go home you know we were kind of stuck in our school you know there was no safe way for us to go back home to visit our parents because of that reason you know i immigrated to canada several years after that he was able to, you know, go back and forth to the Serbian part of Bosnia to visit his parents. I remember on one occasion, uh, he called me, like, to, 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 to tell me something in secret. We entered this bathroom that we used to, like, had to clean so much and we got in trouble so much because we wouldn't clean so well. And he told me, we captured some people from your hometown, you know, during one of the actions. So I asked them about your parents because at that time I hadn't heard about my parents for like a couple of years. I had no idea whether they were alive or dead. So he told me, yeah, you know, these people knew who your parents were and they said that your mother and your father were alive and your sister was okay. And then I asked him what happened to the people they actually captured the people from my hometown. And he 
just shrugged his shoulders, you know. I knew exactly what had happened to them. And at that time, I had no idea how to react, you know. How, what do you do in a situation like that? You know, this is your friend who is also your enemy, and you're kind of trying to figure out, you know, what the context of the situation is. Because the people that he had captured from my hometown were also my friends, too. It was a very, very difficult situation. Nevertheless, Dragon and I continued you know, ended up graduating from our school for four years. Again, we were best friends. We, we, we put our lives in danger so much just to save each other. Uh, and not only that, like we were not just friends in, in, in school, we were friends outside as well because we were both musicians. So we ended up meeting the same people and uh, his uh, girlfriend slash fiance was my best friend as well too. So after we graduated, uh, he was uh, able to go to war and join his side and I wasn't because I, there was no safe way for me to join Bosnian Muslims and I could not stay with Bosnian Serbs because no one really trusted me. I was kind of uh, the remains of former Yugoslavia a little bit of Bosnian, a little bit of Croatian, a little bit of Serbian, and not welcome absolutely anywhere but Newfoundland, Canada. <laughs> you know. So one day, Dragon's group was sent on a mission. They chartered buses to deliver them to the front lines, and uh, they went out. Whatever the action was, they concluded it. And on the way back, uh, the buses were driving them back to the, you know, their, 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 their unit. And one of the remaining Bosnians somehow, who survived that action, got a hold of a rocket launcher, one of those like shoulder held rocket launchers. And he jumped in front of their bus. So there was nothing they could do. They were just sitting on this bus with this guy <laughs> holding a launcher. And he, of course, launched the shot, hit the middle of the bus. And the only person who died because of that was Dragon. The others somehow survived. And of course, they got this guy and you know what happened. Uh, a few days later, another Serb, this time a Croatian Serb, because former Yugoslavian conflict was so complicated, I don't want to get into all the details, what happened with Slovenia, what happened with Croatia, with Bosnia, with Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia, it's just so complicated. Uh, there was three of us, again, really good friends. So this guy was also a Serb, but he was a member of Serbian minority in Croatia, while Dragan was a member of Serbian minority in Bosnia. And I was a member of Bosnian minority in Serbia. <laughs> we were all minorities all over the place. He called me and he said, this is what happened to Dragan and you have to go tell his fiance. Of all the people in the world to notify her he asked me to do it. I told him, Nicola, look man, you know, I just doesn't feel right, you know. The people from my side shot him to death. And he told me, for you there are no sides. There's you and then there's the world. It was... Um, very, very difficult, difficult decision that I had to make. Uh, and only a few times in my life I was able to say no. And this is one time and I actually said no. I can't do this. I don't want to be the one bringing this news. I have no idea who delivered the news, how they delivered the news to, 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 to my friend. I don't know what happened. 
but I do know what happened to Dragon and uh, to this day I remember him every time he played music I remember his eccentricities how he was able to play rock and roll during that war alongside with me we were kind of always a sore sight for everyone else because uh, a Serb and a Bosnian playing rock and roll for Croatians <laughs> was a big, big, big problem for everybody. Some things just can't be done. Love you all. Thank you.